Good afternoon, everybody. I am delighted to welcome you to today's Irish Institute for Catholic Studies lecture. Our speaker today is Michal Paldrick Osuluan. Michal is a poet, musician, composer and performer. From his infancy, he was steeped in music and spirituality and performance, and he inherited a great musical and spiritual heritage of poetry, song and sacred story from his mother and his father, both of whom are outstanding and internationally acclaimed musicians. A native of Limerick and Tipperary, he has performed across the globe. His performances include Electric Picnic, the National Concert Hall, and with Russell Crowe in London, in the USA, and he has toured around the world with his mother, Noreen Nirian, and Owen O'Sullivan, his brother, performing at sacred festivals and events. Michal studied music in UCC. He did a Bachelor in Music, and he earned a Master's in ethnomusicology at the University of Limerick. He's an expert in human beatbox techniques. He studied rap music and rap culture in UCC. Michal, also known as Moli, he sang and played Baron with the Chieftains at the Belfast Festival at Queen's. With his brother Owen, he formed the group Size Two Shoes and recorded his first album from 2007 to 2008. And Size Two Shoes released their second album, Happy Songs, in 2011. He's recorded two further albums with his mother, the acclaimed singer Noreen Irian and his brother, Owen. And in 2019, he featured with Owen in an hour long PBS TV special celebrating their music at the Catherine Hepburn Cultural Arts Centre in Connecticut. Michal is a poet and his first book of poetry, Early Music, was published in 2020. It's a really beautiful book of poems, really short and fabulous. And David White, the acclaimed poet who he's performed with for many years in the USA, described Moley's book, Early Music, as a book of small but miraculous wonders. Today, we're delighted to have Moli come to speak to us about poetry, virtuosity, and the invitation, classroom as masterclass. Over to you. Santus. Santus, Santus, Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis und Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua, O Zana, in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in omine domini, O Hosanna, oh, in This is my prayer room. No one comes in. I anoint icons here with sandalwood and pour milk over deities chanting my throaty mantra. I sat cross-legged till I could no more, but don't worry, my God already knows my aches and pains. 
This altar holds my trinkets of faith, the tools of prayer, instruments of hope, and rag offerings to my elephant God. If you wish to pray, I let you, turning halfway through my rosary, making sure you're comfortable for Tuesday's prayers are slightly longer, you see. The incense will rise for you and I, for there is peace in worship at the foot of a virgin mother and a blue skinned baby, the gurus and martyrs, the saints and angels. And when I hand you the bell, ring it. Not once, but keep ringing till I tell you. Pray with me, say the words, ring the bell. We're almost there. This part is my favorite. It's where God feels the closest. So ask for mercy or for help or forgiveness. No need to tell for my story is your story, is everybody's story. For this is my prayer room, no one comes in. I anoint icons here with sandalwood and pour milk over deities chanting my throaty mantra. I sat cross-legged till I could no more, but don't worry, my God already knows my aches and pains. This altar holds my trinkets of faith, the tools of prayer, instruments of hope, and rag offerings to my elephant God. If you wish to pray, I'll let you. Turning halfway through my rosary, making sure you're comfortable, for Tuesday's prayers are slightly longer. You see, the incense will rise for you and I, for there is peace in worship at the foot of a virgin mother and a blue skinned baby, the gurus and martyrs the saints and angels. And when I hand you the bell, ring it. Not once, but keep ringing till I tell you, pray with me, say the words, ring the bell. We're almost there, this part is my favorite. It's where God feels the closest. So ask for mercy or for help or forgiveness. No need to tell for my story is your story, is everybody's story. and let the bell stop ringing now. We've prayed well today. I know my God is pleased to meet you, sees your sad eyes and sweet spirit and knows you have much more to do. And let the bell stop ringing now. We've prayed well today. I know my God is pleased to meet you, sees our sad eyes and sweet spirit and knows we have much more to do. That was a piece, a poem dedicated to my mother-in-law, Maya, who lives in New Jersey, on the east coast of America. And she's a Hindu, and every day the Hindus perform a puja, a daily prayer, and she has a wonderful, easy relationship and routine with prayer with a, a beautiful but informal altar up above in one of the spare bedrooms. And uh, each day they shower and uh, sit cross-legged as best we can and anoint these beautiful portraits of saints in the Hindu traditions. And when I first visited my uh, mother and father-in-law's home, my wife's family home, I virtuosically asked quite subtly if I could join uh, my mother-in-law on one of her daily prayers in a virtuosic streak of interfaith insight. I uh, bravely stepped up and um, 
she wasn't that shocked, but it took one or two days before I got the nod. Take your shower now, you know, let's go, let's do it. Thank thankfully, I was ready and willing, and I experienced my first Hindu prayer in the most beautiful way. And just before we began, I, I was just myself and Maya upstairs, and she turned to me and she said, this is my prayer room, no, no one comes in. And this was not a, uh, a lament, a lamentative connotation. It was a, but not celebratory either, but one of pride, I suppose. This was her place. So I hope we can make this our little prayer room for the next 30 minutes and reflect upon some ideas and some of my experiences around virtuosity and poetry and education and spirituality. My experience with virtuosity began at a young age as both of my parents are educators in the arts and and were are on the fringes <laughs> uh, in differing degrees of religious communities around the world and around Ireland. So as a child and as a teen and as an adult, I've had the position of seeing both sides of a spiritual community life and also a sense of virtuosity in the arts, both backstage and from an audience perspective. And I've always been enthralled with the idea of virtuosity and how it has affected my life uh, as a virtuoso in music and more recently poetry and in performance in the human voice I've used in many ways God has granted me many abilities and a sensibility around the use and recognition of my own voice in the world as a vocation virtuosity in our vocations and I suppose today I'd love it to be a illumination, a rediscovery, a re-evaluation, a reminder, a reminder of our own virtuosity in the world and the impact of the virtuosos who have gotten us to the lofty heights of this Institute of Catholic Educational Lecture here. It's a great honour to be here and uh, my name is Michal and I'm out here in Killaloo, County Clare on uh, Loch Derg, not far from where I grew up on the Limerick and Tipperary, uh, the liminal space between Limerick and Tipperary. So I suppose as far as virtuosity in education is concerned, I've always been fascinated with how virtuosity and education intersect, especially at the beginning of a educational relationship. The idea of how much virtuosity does one show to a student, a beginner, an un uninitiated person? How much do you use virtuosity as an introduction? Coming from an artistic background and a singing background, uh, sing singers, you know, know nothing of uh, the, the slow reveal, if you wish, I think singers uh, really do upfront their uh, virtuosity as a rule. Um, start strong, um, show you the full range and all of these, all of these, uh, your core competencies. But in the educational setting, and as a result in a ritual setting too, I've always been fascinated with the dynamic between virtuosity and prayer or virtuosity and education, which I find have many, many similarities. And I think that virtuosity has been, maybe we're a bit, we're a bit shy around virtuosity. So this reflection for this next half an hour could be around reevaluating our sense of virtuosity in our ritual and our educational lives. 
so we must ask what is virtuosity and where does it live and of course like all of the best things in spirituality spirituality and education in my experience it's uh it lives between things virtuosity lives between things and it's an alchemy of many different disciplines uh simplicity and complexity a true virtuoso is in my opinion a person who is doing something that you can imagine doing yourself with an excellence that is uh, that is fascinating it's invitational and extraordinary a true virtuosic state is something that feels familiar but is also extraordinary not of this world virtual true virtuosity is very humble very generous but also by definition quite self-involved so there is definite alchemy between the motivation of a virtuoso especially from the subjective matter of a virtuoso a virtuosity is educational and mystifying and it is interdisciplinary really as well it's on a, not shy or uh, not afraid to to mix worlds and virtuosity for me as a musicologist and a poet has allowed me access to worlds and communities that i would not have had access to otherwise a sense of ownership a sense of place within a religious life music and performance on every level whether it be choirs or solo um, pieces but performing in a ritual setting music and the voice and poetry has allowed me to exist in that world while being truly faithful uh, my reading of faithful means having a healthy sense of, of doubt, a natural sense of between things. <laughs> so the, this virtuosity has actually earned me a ritual life. And then I wonder as well how virtuosity has also been an invitation towards a spiritual life for me and how God has presented itself through virtuosity to me and will do in the future. How virtuosity has made a spiritual life attractive, uh, desirable, for it's not desirable for all people. So I said I'd open with the prayer prayer room. This is my prayer room from Maya. And I have another little poem here called the virtuoso and I think the virtuoso the virtuosic identity that we're here to reflect upon is definitely between things but it certainly doesn't happen by accident nor is it fostered by a sense of uh, anything other than a full sense of ownership over the state the flow state as well I've heard virtuosity called so this is called the virtuoso and it's for, it's for you the virtuoso i don't care if you're sorry nor do you even anymore why atone for your gifts express remorse for your ability begging pardon in public be instead the unrepentant virtuoso for you choose to stand showing us the spirit stir then fill and overflow within you the spirit does not ask forgiveness nor permission and upon your stage you can do no wrong get out of the way we love what you have and need no reminder of our sentence here on earth please just set us free For I don't care if you're sorry, nor do you even anymore. 
Why atone for your gifts, express remorse for your ability, begging pardon in public, be instead the unrepentant virtuoso, for you choose to stand, showing us the spirit stir, then fill and overflow within you. The spirit does not ask forgiveness nor permission. And upon your stage, you can do no wrong. Get out of the way. We love what you have and need no reminder of our sentence here on earth. Please just set us free. So I wonder how we can reflect upon the virtuosos that have that have uh, influenced us in our lives. And it's very difficult God, for as for me, the virtual, the true virtuoso is is almost a camouflage, you know. It is something that is seems natural but highly uh, highly uh, ensconced. And for a virtuoso doesn't show off, but finding that virtuosity within ourselves, within our ritual life and within our educational process. Many of you will be teachers and I've taught myself and I've taught music and a lot of what influenced me was teaching vocal percussion to primary and secondary school children. Now, vocal percussion is exactly how it sounds. It's making noises with your mouth and it's extremely um, virtuosic, but it's also quite, it has a lot of parlor tricks, if you will. Um, and I'll, I'll do a little bit for you, but in the hip hop tradition, it's a mimicry of the turntables and the, the records and stuff like this. And I started as a drummer as well. And of course, drums is an extremely virtuosic art form uh, immediately. People love it, but they don't know what you're doing. So there's a lot of uh, ventriloquism, if you will. Uh, and the same goes for human beatboxing or vocal percussion. So I would visit and do schools workshops on hip hop, Irish rap and vocal percussion or human beatboxing. And kids, they just, they just can't get enough of this. And coming from a culture of seeing master classes, and knowing the power of a virtuosity as an introduction, um, I used to not hold back. And uh, I used to teach these kids at quite a high level, um, even though they were floundering to keep, keep up. I knew that one kid out there, probably the one that wasn't making the noises, was actually getting it and was gonna be practicing it on the bus, if you know what I mean. Um, so I would do things like this, I would go, So let me teach you a little bit. If you repeat after me a p sound but with an F on it, like this. Try that. Good. Now try it. Good. Now try it. Now this is where it gets quite ventriloquistic and virtuosic. Uh, you breathe in both sides of the back of your tongue. So breathe out. Now breathe in both sides of the back of your tongue. Like that. That's three inhale breaths. So the first noise is try that. Excellent. Second noise is try that. Third noise is three inhale breaths. Now there's th there's four beats in the bar. One, two, three, four. But there's three noises. So we repeat the sound. So it goes.
Brilliant. Brilliant. Doing real good. That out of that, then within half an hour, you can have kids going like. Things like this. And uh, then you can drop in your favorite song. Song to things like that and uh, I'm sure that I converted a few young children to uh, vocal percussion at least for a day or two through the uh, through the almost ambushing them uh, through the virtuosic uh, virtuosic approach dropping one in the deep end if you will and that was that was a very enlightening educational process for me uh, and one that I saw reflected in my own educational experience as well for I was a student that always gravitated towards a mystical or virtuosic or mystifying sensibility towards teaching um, I remember my English teachers were quite virtuosic and would um, be quite performative, so I would definitely gravitate towards that. And around my own spiritual life, I always gravitated towards a deep prayerfulness around uh, all of the elements of virtuosity, which was mystery and simplicity, uh, performance, uh, virtuosity in terms of language and performance and music so all of the the um the complexities but the simplicities and the the humility of of performing something quite well and the idea that i would um be gravitate towards a, a spiritual direction that was very simple but uh but also very uh, virtuosic it's quite um uh, intoxicating for me and one of the elements of virtuosity that I find in my own spirituality is as, as is an uh, an ease with risk or an ease with uh, an interdisciplinary sensibility around spirituality an ease with a uh, an interfaithfulness and a uh, parity of esteem among spiritual approaches and that has always i suppose been reflected in my upbringing around many different styles of music like classical music traditional music was always seen as 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 partners really um and jazz hip-hop <laughs> and this sense of uh um not being tied to any particular genre of music but being informed by uh, by the mix of things has always been at the center of my approach creatively uh, and virtuosically and spiritually so, there's a great poem of uh, my great friend David White which speaks to me a lot around a kind of a hermetic or spiritual uh, virtuosity and the ease and the selfless and selfishness of prayer and prayer is also for me a out-of-body experience a sense of being between things a poignancy of grief and celebration grief and gratefulness which i find poetry to death to uh, also embody that sense of joy and sadness grief and gratefulness uh, and David White has a great poem called Coleman's Bed Laba Colmon which is there in the heart of the burn and uh, it's a cave um, that was home to 
a small monastery, a small community, and originally a, a hermetic outpost of Colmon. It's so it's said, and uh, I'd like to read it for you. It's called Coleman's Bed, and it's, uh, I suppose, the virtuosity of the meditative state. Make a nesting now, a place to which the birds can come. Think of Kevin's prayerful palm holding the blackbird's egg. And be the one looking out from this place who warms interior forms into light. Feel the way the cliff at your back gives shelter to your outward view and then bring in from those horizons all discordant elements that seek a home. Be taught now among the trees and rocks how the discarded is woven into shelter. Learn the way things hidden and unspoken slowly proclaim their voice in the world. Find that far inward symmetry to all outward appearances. Apprentice yourself to yourself. Begin to welcome back all you sent away. Be a new enunciation. Make yourself a door through which to be hospitable, even to the stranger in you. See with every turning day how each season makes a child of you again wants you to become a seeker after bird song and rainfall. Watch now how it weathers you to a testing in the tried and true, admonishes you with each falling leaf to be courageous, to be something that has come through, to be the last thing you want to see before you leave the world. Above all, be alone with it all, a hiving off, a corner of silence amidst the noise. Refuse to talk even to yourself and stay in this place until the current of the story is strong enough to float you out. Ghost then to where others in this place have come before. Under the hazel by the ruined chapel, below the cave where Coleman slept, become the source that makes the river flow and then the sea beyond. Live in this place as you were meant to and then, surprised by your abilities, become the ancestor of it all, the quiet, robust and blessed saint that your future happiness will always remember. For make a nesting now, a place to which the birds can come. Think of Kevin's prayerful palm holding the blackbird's egg and be the one looking out from this place who warms interior forms into light. Feel the way the cliff at your back gives shelter to your outward view and then bring in from those horizons all discordant elements that seek a home. Be taught now among the trees and rocks how the discarded is woven into shelter. Learn the way things hidden and unspoken slowly proclaim their voice in the world. Find that far inward symmetry to all outward appearances. Apprentice yourself to yourself, begin to welcome back all you sent away. Be a new enunciation, make yourself a door through which to be hospitable, even to the stranger in you. See with every turning day, how each season makes a child of you again, wants you to become a seeker after rainfall and birdsong. Watch now how it weathers you to a testing in the tried and true, admonishes you with each falling leaf to be courageous, to be something that has come through, to be the last thing you want to see before you leave the world. Above all, be alone with it all, a hiving off, a corner of silence amidst the noise, refuse to talk even to yourself and stay in this place until the current of the story is strong enough to float you out. Ghost then to where others have gone before. Under the hazel by the ruined chapel below the cave where Coleman slept, become the source that makes the river flow and then the sea beyond. Live in this place as you were meant to 
and then surprised by your abilities become the ancestor of it all, the quiet, robust and blessed saint, your future happiness will always remember. And uh, I hope that you have found a seam of virtuosity uncovered or rediscovered, a seam of virtuosity that formed you, but that is laying, waiting to be buffed up. There's a great song I've been singing recently, and uh, you'll know it. So I hope you can join me. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear me? the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way, sisters. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way and who shall wear. The robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Brothers, oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. And as I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Mm, oh, mothers. Oh, mothers, let's go down. Let's go down. Come on down. Oh, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray, down in the river to pray, down in the river to pray. We're down in the river with you, praying, and the bell is ringing. 